<laughs> oh, hi, I'm here with uh, Casey Putsch. Uh, Casey runs uh, Putsch Racing, and um, uh, he's uh, quite an adventurer, quite a, uh, a uh, prolific builder, and um, a race car driver. Um, how are you doing tonight, Casey? I'm great, Bill. Thanks for having me uh, on your uh, interview. Oh, you're welcome. It's it's uh, very uh, nice of you to talk with Maker Masters. Um, yeah. One of the uh, things that I've noticed about you, uh, we talked earlier, uh, is that you're kind of a renaissance man. You, you're involved in quite a little bit of everything. Uh, yeah, but, but you got to challenge yourself. Yeah. Well, the way that you came to my notice was... Um, for a project that you made, um, but I'd like to talk to you before we get into that. Uh, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about Push Racing. How long have you um, uh, been running Push Racing? Well, Push Racing uh, really came about as an LLC a number of years back when uh, actually I was working with a management team in Germany uh, for me to move to Europe to race Formula Three Euro Series professionally and to train and to uh, start testing and racing GP2 and then quite frankly to see if they get an American in F1. Um, well, what happened was the real estate market in America collapsed and we lost our main sponsor and that was a change of plans. So, um, I just kept doing what I do here in the States, uh, building cars and you know restoring sort of racing cars and things like that and racing. And then uh, most recently, over the last year, I had done the turbine powered Batmobile project and just before I got that done, essentially, uh, it really came time in every way for me to physically open up my own shop and uh, have that facility. So push, push racing is now a physical place for the uh, furtherance of automotiveness. <laughs> Excellent. Now, you briefly mentioned a turbine-powered Batmobile. Now, folks don't uh, probably take that very seriously at first when they hear it or, or realize exactly what it is but you physically took and created a model of the 1989 Michael Keaton uh, Batmobile from the movies with an actual turbine engine uh, as a power plant? Uh, yeah, indeed. well um, I mean obviously you know, from my racing background and such and restoring cars and building things and antiques and everything like this um, you know, I gained a lot of uh, kind of a diverse set of skills. But now, had you ever touched a jet engine before? No, I haven't. I knew how they worked in theory and, uh, you know, all the basics about them. And, you know, they intrigued me intellectually. And I, I was like, I have to do something with one of these sometime. And uh, regarding the Batmobile, the 1989 one that's most classic to me and has a, you know, a theatrical magic to it, uh, I knew I could pull it off. And, uh, because of my racing knowledge and, and uh, the manufacturing of race cars over history, uh, I knew lots of neat techniques for building something like that that would make it a worthy performance car. Mm -hmm. And uh, But more than that, uh, I wanted to make it turbine powered because that's what all Batmobiles have been portrayed as in the movies and cartoons and everything like that. But it's never been done. It's never been done. Mm -hmm. You know, the cars in the movies were just props uh, made to work on a stage. Uh, but I wanted a real performance driving car that looked exactly like it, obviously, and uh, was powered by a turbine engine. So, and to be specific regarding that, it's not powered by the thrust of the turbine engine, such as with a jet. Mm -hmm. It's powered by what's called a turbo shaft engine, which uses that thrust internally and directs it upon another turbine blade that is mechanically connected to the rear wheels via a transmission and it drives the rear wheels just like a normal car. There is a throttle, you do shift gears. Um, the driving technique's a little bit different, but it's drivable like any car. So, so where did you come across the turbine engine to put into your uh, vehicle? Well, quite frankly, I think I've been looking all through the internet for some brokers that have uh, turbine engines and things like that, and even looking on eBay and such, and um, found uh, a guy more the east of here, east side of the United States, that that's what he deals. He deals in old surplus engines and such. And uh, I narrowed it down to what engine would be the best configuration, got with him, and he had one. So it worked out. This is an engine from a, um, uh, I believe you said a uh, helicopter drone. Yes. It was a uh, drone helicopter uh, done in the uh, late 1960s, used by the Navy. Um, it was powered by this turbine engine. 
They had two counter-rotating uh, propeller blades, kind of like some of those little Rio Patrol helicopters, you, you know, kids buy at Radio Shack, that sort of thing. Sure, there's a ton of them in the house. Yeah, you know what's up. Um, uh, it was a small drone that could carry two torpedoes up to 70 miles away to drop on enemy submarines. And actually, interestingly enough, uh, I was at a party over the 4th of July weekend, and there was uh, a gentleman there that had been in the Navy and, and captain.